Here we have a particularly tricky exam question from the OCRA specification in A-level chemistry, which is themed on the enthalpy topic, and it's using Hess's law in a bit of a different way. This is from 2017's paper three exam. So if you want to check out the question first and have a go at it before you watch this tutorial, by all means, have a go with that. And I'll put a link to where you can find the exam papers in the video description. So for this particular exam question, you're given three different reactions just here. So we've got 3.1 through to 3.3. And we're being asked if we go right the way through the question here to our instruction. And as we can see, it is a level of response exam question to calculate the enthalpy change of reaction 3.2 and the enthalpy change of reaction 3.1 and to show all the working. So essentially what we need to be able to do for this question is link these three different reaction equations up in a Hess cycle. And reaction 3.1 is going to be the A to B over the top part of this. And then our other reactions are going to take us around this bottom section to meet the demands of Hess's law. So looking at a Hess cycle for this. You have also already been given the enthalpy change of reaction for uh, reaction 3.3 just here. We're told that that is negative 57.6 kilojoules per mole. And reaction 3.2 is going to be calculated using all of this calorimeter data that you've been lumbered with at the middle part of the question just here. The final one here, reaction 3.1, as I've already mentioned, is going to be calculated by using these other two reaction enthalpy changes as an alternative route for that top process, and the Hess cycle is going to be crucial for that. So let's take a look at my full formal answer for this and how you would be expected to assemble the Hess cycle in this case. So it does mention Hess's law quite extensively in this particular question. And you can see here I've annotated, if I just zoom out a little bit so you can see all of this at once, I've annotated the question to see where I'm going to get all my different data for. And this is for calculating the enthalpy change of 3.2, since that's going to be using this calorimeter data. What we can see here is I'm going to be using Q equals MC delta T. And so I harvest through the question here, looking for how I'm going to get all of the data that goes into this correctly. Now, once I've got that, I'm going to use the enthalpy change for reaction 3.2 alongside the enthalpy change for reaction 3.3 in order to calculate the enthalpy change for 3.1. And don't forget, I've already been given 3.3's enthalpy change. Now, the reaction equation for 3.1 across the top here is between the sodium oxide and the hydrochloric acid. Now, going down this side, you've noticed that I've written 3.2 here. This is for the calorimeter procedure. And for the calorimeter procedure, we're literally just adding water to the sodium oxide. Now, what that creates is some sodium hydroxide. Now, once I've got the sodium hydroxide here, that allows me to link this up with reaction 3.3, which reacts the hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide instead of hydrochloric acid with sodium oxide, like I can see in 3.1 just at the top. And so that allows me to create this second side to the Hess cycle just here, where these two are reacting together to make the same products that reaction 3.1 made. Now, there are some slight ratio issues here, and that's why I've put a little bit of a doubling in this. By the time I've actually done reaction 3.2, I've got a much greater multiple here of the reaction that's listed as 3.3 in the data just above here. You can see that I've only got one mole of each of these here reacting together to make one mole of water. And so the enthalpy change here, which actually is an enthalpy of neutralization, is negative 57.6. But since I've got a bit more of a different balancing just here, and I've not really balanced up the waters, but there would be at least two here going through this direction. I'm therefore going to double this because I've got two moles of everything here. I've got a multiple of this entire process taking place as I go from this bottom section up to the side here following reaction 3.3. So I just need to calculate 3.2 using the calorimeter data. Consider 3.3 getting doubled to move around this side. And if I add up this alternative route, then it's going to give me the enthalpy change for 3.1. This isn't the only time this has come up in the OCRA exams, and so you do need to watch out for assembling this kind of complicated Hess cycle, but it is just literally three reaction equations being put together, and so once you've figured out what your top one is, you've then just got to put these two on the correct sides, which actually, when you look back at this, there's no real other option that you can do to clip these together because you can see the products you're trying to make here, and when you look at the three different processes, you can see which reactions share that common product, and so that allows you to position them correctly. So let's have a look at how I an analyze the data just here. So here is my reaction 3.2 analysis. So this is my calorimeter work. 
So I start off with Q equals MC delta T. I've got my final solution mass here of 25.75. OCR did introduce some clarity when it comes to the Q equals MC delta T calculations. And they said that whenever this is a solution, so a direct method, you may have this described as in your notes somewhere, uh, they will expect you to use the final solution mass here and they will provide you with that information. I've got the 4.18 from my data sheet and my delta T by analyzing the data in the question is 35. Now remember that's unitless here. I'm not looking at a delta T uh, being converted into Kelvin. Um, I'm looking at a delta T which doesn't carry any degree C or uh, Kelvin. So you don't need to worry about conversion. That gives me a Q value here in joules of 3,767.225. Keep this value as big as you can, please. There is absolutely no reason to round up until you get to the very end, or at least you should do this to about four sig fig. Just keep it a nice big trailing number. So that gives me a Q value in kilojoules, as you can see here, 3.767. And then what I do at that stage is go back to my data and find the moles that I'm using here of the sodium oxide. And so that's going to be the 1.24 divided by 62 to give me 0 0.02 mole. Finally here, to find out the molar enthalpy change for reaction 3.2, I need to do minus Q divided by N. And so that gives me negative 3.767 divided by the 0.02. So my enthalpy change for 3.1 is minus 188.4 kilojoules per mole. You can see here that I've also given a little bit of a further descriptor because I'm multiplying my reaction 3.3 by 2 as my HES cycle has two HCLs, two NaOH, and it would make the 2H2O. And so this is an, um, an enthalpy of neutralization and particularly because of that 2H2O that I would make for this. I know I've not labeled them up in this, but it's not crucial to have your HES cycle completely balanced in terms of the waters here. What I'm going to do is multiply my 3.3 enthalpy change by 2. And so that means my calculation of adding these two enthalpy changes together to get this top one is demonstrated just here, like so. So I've got enthalpy change 3.1 equals 3.2 added to double the value of 3.3, which was provided by the exam question. So you can see I've got all my data into here and I would use negative uh, 188.4. I've just put this in brackets here for uh, fitting this all in this section more than anything else. Uh, but that gives me an answer here to three significant figures either way at the end of negative 303 kilojoules per mole. And if I didn't round that up, it would be that negative 303.6, for example, just there. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope it has made a difference. But before you go, I do need some help. Please leave this video a like before you go because it really does help support my channel and let YouTube know I still exist. There's loads of good stuff around the screen now and links to my other video content in the description down below. So make sure you check that out before you head off. Until next time though, everybody, happy revising.